plaintiff, Michael Soule, says in the past 10 years, he went from being a dope man to starting a work program for young men. Michael claims he and the defendant started dating, but after they broke up, she refused to repay a loan, so he's suing. Defendant Lisa Sparrow says she's had it rough ever since her childhood friend tried to kill her by poisoning her, and she thought Michael was her guardian angel. However, Lisa claims after Michael refused to help pay for her son's birthday party, they had a falling out, and she's countersuing for breaching their agreement. All right, go ahead. First of all, Your Honor, glad to see you again. I was here 10 years ago, 2000, and I had a woman problem with my wife. You don't have nothing That's else why. to do? No, 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 no. I'm still got problems. I mean, women and women. Women love problem. Them. But the reason why I'm here today is because, you know what, in the last 10 years, I didn't change my life. Yeah. You know, I've been, I've been a dope boy, a college graduate, and beat people up, and did a lot of wrong things. But the last 10 years, I've been walking with God. Good. You know, and, All right. and this is a letter, this is a letter from, a, from one of your, I say, associates in the, in the law business. But I've been trying to teach these young men how to pull up their pants and walk right with God. And I've been trying to help other people out here. And this is where we got a problem at, because I turn a help into, it turned to friendship and then a lover. What have you been so, doing in terms of helping? I've been helping up start a work program for young men. I've been turning around with them jobs and trying to make sure they try to learn math, English, how to buy a truck, try to take care of their family, and try to respect these women out here. You ain't got to hit them, walk away. Good. So that's what I've been doing. Good. Good to hear that. Good. What's your story? You helping battered women, going to feed the homeless? Hope you're doing something. This man has a sterling reputation in the community. Okay. My story is, my last name is Sparrow, and I can be just as sweet as the bird, but if you get between me and my child, I will turn into a grizzly bear. All right. I'm just yeah. telling you. Because we've been through a lot. My childhood friend tried to kill me. I had a stroke as a result, oh, and while I was in rehab, how learning, old were you when you had a stroke? This was two years ago. I was 41, mm. and the stroke was a direct result as my friend because my friend poisoned me okay. and tried to kill me, and I almost died. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, I, how did you become associated with the plaintiff? Because um, he did rescue me. Uh, he is a great guy. Mm -hmm. You know, my nickname for him is Guardian Angel. But when I met him, he showed up on my doorstep because. The guy that I had just put in jail for abusing me, I thought Michael was a well-dressed hitman coming to kill me. So that's how we became. How did he show up? He just came and knocked on your door. He knocked on the door. And yes. Said what? I was living in his rental property. He didn't know I was there, and because someone else had put me in his property, I'm paying rent. He mm -hmm. didn't know I was there. Okay. Sounds like you all began dating at some After point. After a certain point, yes, we did. Because Not we... that soon, though. Not that soon. Okay. It wasn't Good just enough. That all right. What went wrong with something so right? <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> because he said that April 6th, which is my son's 15th birthday, he would help me pay for his birthday party, and he didn't do it, so I became a grizzly bear instead of a sparrow. So how much was that? $500, because it was at an I mean, indoor water park. Okay, ma'am. Uh... <laughs> I'm sure I have to hear some more to... Uh, and I understand that he was, he, yes, but he was also in the cookie jar by that time. The cookie so ain't got nothing to do with that gas figured, and luggage. You know, hold on. You figured oh, what? He was, he was playing with the cookie jar by that time, so you can't help my child. I mean, he claimed he got close to me oh, and my okay. son. So having sex with you, you have to pay. Hmm. No, that's Otherwise, not Otherwise, you saying. get mad. No. I he thought you said he, he wouldn't give you $500 for your son's birthday, and you got mad. Is that why you got mad? He promised my child. All right. He promised $500, right? No, sir. He said he would help me. All the right. The total cost. Good. All right. He, and you got mad because he didn't, right? Yes. And you say he should have because he's in the cookie jar, yes. right? <laughs> he's having sex with you. Therefore, he should pay for your son's birthday party. There's no other way to look at it. All right. These women coming here saying, well, if he going to have some, he need to pay me. Independent women these days, they don't uh, rely on men to support them in exchange for sex. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. What do you want to tell me? Okay, what else? sir. Yes, sir. I did help her. I let them stay at my daughter's house. I paid my daughter at least about $750 and some change to let them stay you there. You did? Yes, sir. 
But I know some things is a gift. Some things you do is a gift. It was a blessing. So I left it at that. But she was trying to move out of my daughter's house. And this is where we came at. I went on and lent her the money to get her van fixed and to help pay for the deposit. How much did you loan? It was about $3,800. So you loaned $3,800? You paid seven fifty dollars a month for her rent? And y'all broke up over? You're not giving her 500 for the birthday. No, it wasn't so much that. It was That's just the fact that... I wouldn't have seen it like that. I really was. I just wasn't ready. I was taking care of the business. So you tell me how you broke up. Well, she, she, from her birthday, she came to take me out to dinner. Got romantic, yes. But I wasn't ready for a full-time relationship. Okay. And she so you told her that? It should have been that. And it was about four or five months later. But when her son's birthday came up, I had a job to do out of town. So she got upset because, one, I told her I was going to help her with it, which I agreed, but I didn't know how much the total amount was. And, two, I didn't show up for the party because I was at work. So this was her attitude. Was, and when I turned around and asked her for the remainder of my money, she was like, well, I bought it for my book. Your book? Well, I'm trying to get my book published. And that wasn't what the business was. So that's why I had the attitude. Well, you didn't show up for the party. Sweetie, I wasn't able to show up for the party. Somebody, I got to make money. Then she didn't want to pay me. She wanted to use her book deal as, well, I'll pay you out the deal. That wasn't a regular. You should have brought it to me first and let me make the decision. When was it to be paid? I go to promissory note. It was open because I didn't know when she was going to pay her taxes. All right, Lisa Sparrow. And this is for... 3800 as repayment of a loan. Ma'am, what do you say about the uh, loan and the repayment? I had intended to repay him, but like he said... I, I'm self-publishing my book, so I, I took my tax refund and paid my publisher instead. Okay. You didn't feel you were deceiving him? No, because taking care of my child is more important. No, I was you going said to book. pay him back. You said back. the book, the book, the book. Yeah, the you book You said you spent your money on the book instead of paying him. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking about that. Yeah. You have a contract where you told the man you would pay him, and you didn't. Instead, you took the money and paid to have your book published. You don't think you deceived me? No. Why? because I have fully intend to repay him the loan. I just wanted right, to But you say you spent the money on a book for yourself. Okay. All right, if you don't think that's deception, I understand. And your counterclaim for 500 is for a breach of contract for what? Because he promised that he would help me with my son's party. Sir? I did, but I didn't know how much it was the whole 500. But in terms of having a contract, ma'am, there has to be consideration. What were you to give him if he met the contract? Because he knew that he would... Pardon me? Because he knew that he was helping another good no, man. No, I like said a said. contract requires okay. an exchange of benefits. What was he to get if he met his end of the bargain? What was your contribution to the contract? I was the cookie helping. jar? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking you, man. What were you going to give him in exchange for the $500? Because you're saying it's a contract. Otherwise, it's a gift that was promised. And you okay. can't enforce a gift that was promised. Right. That's not a contract. That's a promise of a future gift. You can promise all the time. Promise your kid you're going to get him a car. You don't get it, the kid doesn't, can't sue you. Could just say, well, my mama lied. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you can say about him is he lied. Unless there was something you were giving in exchange. That no. creates a contract, exchange of things. No. There was no exchange. Anything else? All right. Good enough. 3500 is your judgment. Your claim is dismissed. Have a good day. Everything is about blessing. So I'm still blessing caring for it. I mean, it's just money and business don't mix. Friendship and business don't mix. So you got to understand what you're doing. And that's basically it. No comment.